Hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, all right. There we go. All right. Awesome. Awesome. How are cool, you? man. Good. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Can't complain. I really appreciate you uh, taking a little bit of time just to hop on the podcast and, you know, talk a little bit about the game for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So where, where are you at? Um, right now, um, I'm in Rhode Island, but I'm okay. gonna, I've been on trial with uh, Team Anissa with Flower City. Okay. Um, so I got called back for next month, and if all goes well there, hopefully, um, you sign my first contract. So just kind of focus. Nice, yeah, can't complain. That's so. awesome. Here, yeah. I'm gonna try to give me one sec. I'm gonna grab a couple books and kind of boost this up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, actually, actually, a dirty shoe box should do the trick. <laughs> Where's a uh, Flower City gonna be? Is that the Rochester one? Yeah, it's in Rochester. So okay. uh, it was pretty. It's a. It was. It's been a cool experience so far. So um, it's it's probably one of my you know first professional experiences, but um, it's been awesome just to you know kind of. It, it for me it was interesting to see like. Um, cause I played in college a little bit and then I ended up mm -hmm. um, dropping out to really focus on, um, like trying to sign a contract and you can just see the difference between a college player and then someone who's yeah. played at the professional level. Like you can see it in their body, their intensity, their everything. So it was, it was, it was eye opening, but in a good way, it was, it was, yeah. no, it's, it's so cool to go on those things, especially like your first couple and just be like, all right, this is, this is it. And then, especially when it's your first one or your first, like, then you're like, okay. And it's not like an open tryout either. It's like an actual with the team. Then it's like, you go home and you're like, holy shit. Like this is, this is the level. So yeah. yeah. It gives you a ton of motivation to keep going. That's super cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, like I said, I appreciate you coming on. So for the listeners, if you kind of want to talk a little bit um, about yourself and where you've played and all that, just so they can get a good understanding of who you are. Yeah, for sure. So my name's Sam Howard. I'm 28 years old from Tacoma Park, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm currently with Oklahoma City Energy in the USL Championship. This is my sixth year as a pro. Um, but growing up kind of in the D.C. area, I played with Potomac for a while uh, and then McLean and D.C. United Academy just for a little bit. Um, I actually got hurt my senior year of high school pretty bad. I did my shoulder. So I kind of fell off sort of the recruiting path. Um, now, I had some D1 schools that were interested, some D3 schools that were interested, and ended up going to Kenyon College, which is a small D3 liberal arts school in Ohio. Um, got recruited there to play soccer, played soccer my first year, and then actually got cut at the end of preseason my sophomore season. So ended up playing football there my sophomore year. Um, kicked for the football team. It was the first time I'd ever played football. But I love the school, and I wanted to stick around for a little bit. And then uh, – Kind of that year, I was trying to decide, do I want to keep going with soccer? Do I want to stick with football? And ultimately decided to stay with soccer. So transferred to LaSalle University, which is a Division One school in Philadelphia. Graduated from there in 2015. And then uh, went to Howard in D.C. for kind of a fifth year. Started my master's and stuff like that. Played at Howard, did really well there. Uh, and then kind of the came, time came at the end of that year, December. Sorry, there's bugs and stuff flying around. <laughs> Um, kind of came at the end of time at the end of that year, I had a, I had a really good internship. I had a couple of job offers You know, I was kind of trying to decide what to do. And I was talking to my goalkeeper coach from home and he, he was connected with a uh, PSC pro Star consulting who run combines and, you know, they do kind of all that stuff. Um, so he was connected with them and they invited me out to go to England with them for a week. And so I went to England, uh, to Birmingham and then, uh, ended up there was a team, well, there was an agent from a team in Sweden that was in the fourth division in Sweden, which is the sixth tier. So we don't even have six tiers in the United States, like, but they go all the way down to like, I think like division eight, which is like the 10th tier basically. Um, and he was like, Hey, there's this team in Sweden, you know, this is the deal. They'll give you housing, a stipend, there's work and coaching available. You know, what do you say? And, you know, I kind of went home after that and I was kind of the, trying to decide, like, do I, you know, do I kind of go the direction I was going, which was sort of a, you know, I had an internship with a senator. I was talking to some um, campaigns about working for them. This was in 2016, so kind of the lead up to the 2016 election. And ultimately, I decided that, you know, I 
there's a very limited window where you can do this and where you can try to be a pro. And, you know, there's always going to be politics and other jobs if that's something I want to go back into. Um, so went over there, signed with the teams called IFK Ulmo. So it's a small town in southeast or southwestern Sweden, sorry, right on the lake, um, about 10,000 people, 12,000 people and just had the best time. You know, we got promoted my first year, played with people from all over the world. Um, you know, we had a couple of Americans and then we also had Brazilians, uh, a couple of guys from Sierra Leone, a couple from Ghana, a couple of French guys. So they were bringing in guys from all over the world trying to kind of get promoted. So they were spending a whole bunch of money in a year or two to kind of make it back into the division two, II, division one level, which is division two is semi-pro. Well, technically they're all semi-pro. Um, but division two starts to become a little bit more organized. And then division one is sort of the first like pro league in Sweden. Um, so we got promoted my first year, kind of came home, was trying to decide what to do. I had an offer from them to return if I wanted to. And, uh, I ended up going back there again for 2017 that was, and so this was now fifth year. So still kind of, you know, probably equivalent to like, I'd say like a PDL level in the States. Um, a little bit more technical, the age range was a little bit bigger. You know, we had guys that were 16, 17 on our team. We also had guys in their 30s that had been pros for, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, so went back over there, had another good year, and then uh, was kind of trying to break into the first or second league in Sweden or in Norway and was kind of struggling with visa stuff and, and sort of kind of making that jump. And so I ended up coming back home. Uh, I had a trial with Chicago Fire in winter 2018. So went to preseason with them and did really well. Um, but they, they weren't really looking to sign. They kind of had their second and their third already and they were looking for a true number one. And, you know, I didn't quite fit that bill just with my experience and my age at the time. Um, so ended up not signing with them and I went out to Fresno, uh, California. So a new team in USL championship. So it was there 2018, 2019. Uh, team ended up folding at the end of 2019. They were kind of wanted to go in a different direction. And then came home 2019, ended up in Omaha in League One after a couple of trials kind of over that winter. I was in Loudoun for a little bit. And I was in Detroit City for NISA for a little bit as well. And things kind of fell through in both of those places. So I ended up in Omaha, signed in Omaha, literally got my contract signed in process the day before everything shut down for COVID. So like we had a, we had a game in Minnesota. We, were, we had a friendly with Minnesota United. And so we're on the bus there, played, did well literally signed my contract on my phone, like on the bus on the way back to Omaha, to Nebraska. And then uh, kind of we get back home and they're like, all right guys, day off tomorrow in Friday. And then uh, we get a call that Thursday, hey, no training this weekend. We're gonna kind of figure out this whole COVID thing. We'll see you guys Monday, mm -hmm. Sunday night. Okay, we're, you know, we're still gonna put a hold. And so our season ended up getting pushed back for probably some March, April, May, we started playing games again at the end of June. So we basically had three full months kind of with nothing. Um, we started doing small group training and training like that, but kind of being in a new city for the first time on my own. Um, well, I have my dog who's laying here in the sun, um, but kind of, you know, just sort of trying to figure everything out and then had the league one season. Um, you know, we did really well. We ended up finishing second in the league. Uh, I was able to play a couple games, which, which was good. You know, I kind of had been riding the bench a little bit in Fresno. I played open cup games and a couple friendlies, but didn't get in any USL championship games. So got some games in Omaha, which was really nice. And then uh, kind of we were all set up for the championship game. We we're going to play Greenville and we we're going to leave on a Wednesday morning to go down there. And we had just gotten a couple, we'd gotten two positive COVID tested kind of the week before that. And so we were trying to figure out what was going on. The league was trying to figure out and everything and coordinate with us and figure out what we were going to do. And we ended up canceling the game because we had a fair number of more guys test positive um, on that Wednesday. And so that got canceled. So that's going to be edit that part out. Yeah. Um, that might be a HIPAA violation, but who knows what a HIPAA violation is at this point. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we, yeah, that, was, that was a bit of a, that was pretty tough because I had, really been looking forward to that game and you know I did not test positive so I would have been able to play if we had kind of had that happen um so then kind of you know was trying to figure everything out whether I wanted to keep on playing what my opportunities were our assistant coach in Fresno was the assistant here last year and actually recently got promoted to be the head coach here um earlier this season and so he 
kind of reached out to me at the end of the season and was, you know, what are your plans for next year? What are you looking to do? Um, and so was able to kind of end up here and land here. And so we've got a bunch of guys from Fresno and we've got a great group. And so, yeah, so this has been great to kind of be in Oklahoma City this year and, and kind of trying to take those next steps and get back to where I was and, and really kind of set myself up for, you know, the rest of this year and, and next year and kind of beyond. So, yeah, that's kind of yeah. college through pro. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And one thing, too, I saw when I was reading, um, you, I believe you had 68 appearances um, when you played yeah. overseas. And so I always, even though some people might say that it was in a, like a, a lower division, I still, I still don't think people realize like how hard it is to have that consistency at, you know, anything. So I'm curious to see because, um, for me, it's always fascinating when I talk to other, you know, goalkeepers, other players, like the mindset behind that, like, what do you think really helped um, find that consistency? Because it's something that's really hard to get, but really easy to fall out of. Um, so what do you think played a, played a role in that? Yeah, for sure. For me, um, so, you know, obviously I had a, you know, I, I didn't play, I played seven minutes in college, you know, before I went to Howard. And so really I hadn't played consistent games since I was 18, 19 years old. You know, I played more football minutes than I had played soccer minutes. Mm -hmm. And so it was just that Howard season, you know, we had a very young team. We had a new coach. We had some, um, we were on academic probate probation from the NCAA. So kind of going through that was such a crucible. And like, you know, I, I ended up finishing in the top five in the NCAA and saves, you know, I probably also led in the most goals in the league. Um, but, or in all division one, not just the league. Uh, so kind of going through that, I think really set me up to, you know, not take anything, not, not make the highs too high and not make the lows too low. Right. I mean, like, so our best result that season was a tie, you know, we tied James, we had a couple of ties, but, we had one game where we tied James Madison after 110 minutes and we we're just getting blasted by shots, but kind of going through that, I think really set me up to then go to Sweden and going in there at Howard. And then going in there was the first time in my career since I had been in, since I'd been in high school where I was the number one and where I was the guy. And so I kind of had a little bit more, room to make more mistakes and more room to find my confidence because I knew that the coach believed me in me and I knew that the team believed in me. And so kind of going into that, you know, again, living in a new country, not learning the language, not speaking the language. Obviously, if you're going to go overseas, Scandinavia is a great place because most people speak English. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of going into a place where you're just under pressure all these different ways, you know, you're away from your family, you're having to cook on your own, you're having to do laundry, go to the gym, look after yourself. You know, one thing that you don't really get prepared for as a pro is just how much free time you have. And so finding ways to really maximize that free time. I mean, so we would train because we had a couple of guys that had jobs. So we would train in the evening every day. So, you know, you wake up eight, nine o'clock, whenever you went, wake up, you got until five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening to kind of do whatever you got to do, prepare yourself for training so that you'll be the best you can be at training. So just figuring out kind of how you are and what your interests are and ways to spend your time, ways to stay disciplined. I think that all kind of came together in getting those almost 70 games, you know, winning the league, gaining promotion, making the promotion playoffs next year, winning kind of like we have what we call like the DM, which is the district cup. So can't, same as kind of like that leads into the Swedish cup, which is, so it's basically a qualifier for, what would be the open cup from the United States. So winning things like that, um, you know, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I really have an answer, like a one specific answer, but I think the biggest thing is just, is being mentally strong and, and being having to rely on yourself and, and prove that you can rely on yourself. And then that shows others that they can rely on you too. Um, so that was the biggest thing and, ju and just get, in those games again those minutes because the second season I was there we did bring another goalkeeper and we split time a little bit kind of at the beginning of the season and I was able to show that I was more consistent and more reliable um and then ended up having a great kind of second two-thirds of the season there uh so yeah I mean the biggest thing is probably just the mental toughness side you know being resilient um yeah that's probably that's probably it <laughs> 
That's awesome because that's a huge accomplishment. When I saw that, I was like, wow, like that's pretty badass. So um, yeah, well, it's it's interesting too because it's it's something I've kind of taken with me, and it's a big reason that they brought me in here to Omaha, you know, or sorry, in Oklahoma and in Omaha as well, where I can kind of point at and say, like, all right, I might not have played, you know, I played I played two League One games last year. I played three or four Open Cup games the week the year before. And then other than that, it's just been like friendlies, you know, we played Leon, so played a Liga MX team, did well against them. But just kind of like, I've been able to sort of take the experience of those two Sweden years, maybe at kind of a semi-pro lower level, um, but take that and then show like, you know, I might not be getting games every single weekend, but when I have played, you know, I've done well and I've showed that I can be relied upon and kind of be a consistent guy. i not biggest thing is not lose my team games yeah um yeah yeah that's yeah. <laughs> that's one thing that's awesome because that's one thing i've noticed that um like people on the outside like especially if i'm watching a game and i hear like announcers talk or whatnot i think they don't i don't think they understand how hard it is especially in the professional environment to find that consistency like if you get a couple games here and there so to be able to do what you did is it's it's really awesome. So another thing I wanted to touch on that I can kind of relate with you on is when I was going into my freshman year of college, um, I had division one offers and then some division three and two offers as well. Um, and I remember thinking I, I was probably it was probably a, like one of the at the time, like the highest like level in my like soccer career, if you want to call it. And I actually I got flown out to like a couple of division one schools. And in my head, that was like my like my one dream. I just wanted to play D1. So everything yeah. was going really well. Um, and then all of a sudden, like I and it was a very big learning point for me. Everything was going well. I was going to these schools. I couldn't believe it. And then all of a sudden I ended up going division three. And I only played 15 minutes my whole first um, year. And I was like, wow. Like it was such a, like a, just a mind, like boggling experience from. Oh, going, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And especially like one thing you learn through the recruiting process. And, you know, I, I, I work with a lot of kids and I kind of guys that are going through this and, and trying to figure out what they want to do is just like where, where you are and where you're playing doesn't really matter. You know, I think especially kind of as the goalkeeping position, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, I didn't play a ton of games and I was still able to kind of, you know, make a career for myself. Um, but it's you just got to find somewhere where you're going to be happy, you know, like so even even with Kenny and even with that experience, like kind of a similar deal. I was I was looking I had a couple of division one offers, um, but a lot of them were going to be like kind of all right you're going to come in as the three or the four you know you might get a, a little bit of money here and there and obviously it's different for everybody you know like if if you need to go d1 to help support yourself and you know kind of take a burden off your family that's huge too um like i i was lucky where you know my parents were able to help me out and my grandparents were able to help me out but we had enough money basically for two years mm -hmm. of college and so that kind of factored in the decision too for i was like okay i was my kenyan i was getting academic money i had a couple scholarships there but then at the end of those two years, I was kind of like, all right, you know, where am I going to go where I can kind of offset some of this burden, kind of help out to make sure I don't graduate with student loans? Because that, I think, especially if you're trying to make it as a pro in the United States, like getting out without student loans is so big because a lot of the times, you know, your first paycheck might be 500 bucks a month, $700 a month. Like it's getting better, um, obviously. And, you know, we've got, some good things happen in the league right now, kind of establishing a minimum. Um, but, you know, you kind of just got to find a place for so many more reasons than just the soccer reason. Like, am I, am I still going to be happy here if I can't play soccer? You know, because that was a huge thing for me. Once I got cut, I was like, well, you know, I still really like the school. I, mm -hmm. I love my classes. I love the school. I have a lot of really good friends here. You know, I'm not really ready to kind of give up on this and just go home. All right, let's see what this football thing's about and kind of go from there um but yeah man no it's crazy especially because like the coach is going to tell you whatever whatever it takes to get you to the school mm -hmm. you know i i was in some places where like even at kenyan it was like coming in it was like yeah you know we really like you like mm -hmm. you know we think you're going to push the start right away yada yada you're the only goalkeeper we're bringing in well, i show up the first day at preseason there's three other freshman goalkeepers there's two seniors and a junior yeah. so we have six goalkeepers yeah. so how 
there's yeah. only you know 20 games in a season mm-hmm. how are how are you guys going to go through six goalkeepers oh well you know none of the freshmen are going to play this year oh okay so we're going to redshirt oh we don't do red shirts in division three sorry yeah. so it's like you go through this whole crazy thing with college stuff um mm-hmm. and it can be super disappointing and super disheartening but figuring out i think also what makes you you outside of soccer is so important Mm-hmm. You know, having make just making sure that your identity isn't totally wrapped up in this thing mm-hmm. that so much of it isn't under your control. Mm-hmm. You know, you might have a coach who doesn't like you. You know, you might have a same as you might have a professor that, you know, you don't like and you end up failing a class or something. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you lose your eligibility. So it's 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 just like all these things, just taking them on the chin, keep going, figuring out the right situations. All that is just. I think this is the biggest struggle on athletics because yeah. just because one opinion, one person's opinion doesn't define you at all. You know, just because this coach might not like me, that doesn't mean that there's not another coach somewhere else that will or that won't, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you said something too that was, was really important and something that I had to learn was um, making sure that, you know, soccer is not your whole identity because for a long time, that's all I was. Like I was just, that's all I was. And I realized um, while doing that, there's like, there can be benefits, but the ends up being more negatives because you're stressing yourself out. You're, you, you put all this pressure. And when I actually, in my opinion, I feel like I became a better player. Um, the more I was able to get away from the game outside of the game. So like give everything Definitely. when you're training, when the game's on, but I realized how important it is to have other things, get your mind away, your body away. And I think that was really like important that you said that because, um, especially for younger players, I think now, because everything's starting super young. Like I started like yeah. late compared to how kids are starting now. Uh, oh, yeah, man. I wasn't, I wasn't a goal. And that's a huge thing too, that I preach to anybody that I talk to or coach or work with, you know, I do a lot of private sessions and, you know, the market for that is exploded, you know, cause everybody, not just in soccer, it's in, it's in baseball, it's in sports, it's in academics, it's in music, it's in dance, it's whatever you want to do. All of a sudden, there's just like this crazy competition to be the best when you're 10 years old. Yeah. Who cares what you are when you're 10 years old as long as you're a happy kid, you know? Yeah. I played, I played every sport I could possibly play. Um, my dad's a music teacher, so I've, I've done music my whole life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think the big and I think the biggest thing in that is just being a well-rounded person does make you a better soccer player and a better goalkeeper and a better leader on your team and a, a easier person to coach if you're willing to work with all these different types of people a better teammate so that's mm-hmm. definitely a big thing I preach is just being well-rounded you know obviously you do at a certain point it is kind of time to kind of pick what you want to do and then you do need that super intense focus yeah. um and even like in the professional game, I mean, you know, we train two hours a day, three hours a day, basically whatever it is. So you've got 21 hours the rest of the day. It's kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. And what you do with that time defines you so much more Mm -hmm. than what you do on the field or what you do in the weight room or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you could have a great training session, but then if you go home and you're eating crappy food or you're in a fight with your girlfriend or, you know, you're worried about other stuff, like, you never know, like all that stuff will impact you on the field too. And so finding ways to stay engaged, but it's like this weird balance of engagement and disconnection, right? So it's like, where can I find things that are still helping me and still, you know, keeping me focused, but also that are fun, you Mm -hmm. know? So yeah, I guess I don't have all the answers. I kind of have a lot of like little ideas, but maybe not like the great little answers for all these things that's that's really good that's I mean that's true I think too like another thing I think you you touched on as well is like being an athlete 24 hours of the day and I think like like you said like you can train really well work really hard but if you go home and you know your eating habits aren't healthy or your relationships are you know negative like all that plays an impact you know what I mean like you can't just be the best you and like training you have to be it all the time so I think that's really important but yeah, I think too, something interesting you said as well is like with kids starting so young and this is my opinion and I mean, I'm nobody, so it doesn't matter. But for me, I feel I feel like it's interesting because I fell in love with the game first and then that made me want to work hard. And now I feel like sometimes like you'll see these crazy things where these kids are like, like you said, 10 years old, nine years old, eight years old. 
and they're training so hard. And um, I think like the idea is right, but it's like, in my opinion, that's going to make it feel more like work. You know what I mean? Rather than yeah. I think you need to fall in love with the game and, and all that. And, but it, it's, yeah, it's definitely interesting to, to see that kind of change, you know, from what it was. But um, another question that I had for you as well was, um, I always think this is interesting when I hear people respond, but if you were, if you were to describe like success and, and football life, whatever, what would be one word that you would use to, to define it, like describe it? Like, what would you think it is? If that makes sense. Happiness, man. Okay. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be happy with what you're doing. You know, like you could be, I mean, you know, I, I, mean, I I could definitely say my, my career hasn't been exactly what I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. when I started out. You know, I, I've, it's been sort of the circumstance of my career is that, you know, I was a starter for two years and I've basically been a second or a third goalkeeper for the last four years. Um, but I do think that I am happy and fulfilled in what I'm doing and in my relationships and in my friendships and, um, you know, the experiences that I've been able to have through the game. So, you know, it's interesting because I, you know, it's, it's, you don't have a ton of control over your on field success, but you do have control over your fulfillment and your enjoyment and your training and kind of all those other things. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have a coach at any level who, you know, coach isn't playing me, coach doesn't like me, you know, yeah, well, are you having fun or do you want to do this? And that's, that's the real question. Cause if you're not having fun, no matter what age you are, you shouldn't be doing it. You should be able to find something that, that is, that is going to make you happy and make you not feel like you're wasting your time or, you know, you dread going to training or you don't want to go to a workout, all that kind of stuff. So as long as you're happy, mm -hmm. you know, that's the only thing that matters for me. Yeah. yeah. That's out of all the interviews I've done. I think that's the best answer I've heard. Cause I've heard, I've heard, yeah. I, I find it interesting. Cause I've heard that. I like that question because I always hear different things, but no, I, I definitely agree. But yeah, I think um, it's it's interesting how you said happiness because um, I, I I agree with you a lot because for me especially um, I just turned twenty one so I'm still like sure. finding that out. Oh, and, you're a baby, man. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, it's it's interesting because um, this like profession is is so hard. You know what I mean? And and and, for, and mentally, I found that it's definitely more mentally. Uh, it's more of a mental battle than than a physical one at times, and so. Um, it's crazy the amount of work that you have to put in and stuff. And for me, like seeing like when everything start, like I've obviously have failed multiple, like I've failed more than I've succeed. And I think that's I, in a weird way, I think that's a good thing because I've learned so much about myself in life, but just kind of getting that call back, even though I know it's not the end goal and I know it's not, you know, the end goal is to sign a contract, but to get that call back when I saw that email, it's like, the most happiness you can ever feel and oh, it's, dude, it's it, the affirmation is is huge you know because it's especially when you're just trying to break in and, and you're going through all this and you're trying to figure out like do i want to do this and then do i want to go back to school like what's my window what am i trying to do it's like you do need those little kind of nuggets almost that carrot at the end of the stick to keep you going because it is very easy especially when you're first starting out and you're first trying to break in to just get super discouraged mm -hmm. like even last year 2020 when I was trying to you know I was going on trials and I was coming off an injury and so I, I didn't feel like I was performing at my best and you know you go through these things and I, I left the Detroit thing once that that kind of fell apart fell through I was like what the heck man like I was just a I was in championship I was playing against MLS teams I was playing against Liga Mekis teams like I was doing really well now I can't even make a NISA team and it's no shot on NISA. Like, yeah, no, 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 like no, no. I've got this experience and I feel like I could be useful here, could be valuable here. And to kind of have that all sort of break down is, oh, sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. It might be it. No, yeah, you're fine. Kind of frozen. Okay. Um, but yeah, just to kind of keep on going and it's, you know, you might have a day where you feel like you, like you might even have that day you could have had training on Tuesday or whatever, where you're like, oh man, like this sucked. I just had to drive. It's 110 degrees outside. I'm training on turf. What am I doing? This is ridiculous. I'm giving away nights out with my friends or my girlfriends or my family or whatever. But then you get that email and you're like, all right, man, I'm yeah. gonna keep going. 
exactly. I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow. I'm going to the gym. <laughs> you just get these little these little re you know, yeah, rejuvenations like because I you know I went on trials and I went on combines even after I was in Sweden and trying to figure it out. You know, I was I was super lucky that my first kind of combine I got something out of it. You know, <laughs> so I did the thing in England and then immediately. But those three days when I was home and I was waiting for a response, oh man, I was a wreck. Mm. We had a snowstorm in DC too. So I couldn't even like, I couldn't even leave the house. Like I couldn't, I was with, I was with my family and I'm just like staring at my phone, like yep. checking my email every two minutes, like checking my spam folder, making sure <laughs> it didn't go to the wrong place. And uh, you finally get that email. Oh yeah, there's a team. Interesting. Oh man. Yeah. All right. This is worth, this is what I want to do. Um, so yeah, dude, that's so huge. Um, well, congratulations, I guess is the biggest thing yeah but yeah that's funny you said that because i remember as well like multiple times like when you're going to a trial or whatever and you're waiting to hear back that that period of time where they tell you they're going to get back to you is the longest yeah. i think time stops existing at that point and that the so it's so that that right there is so hard that i do the same and every once in a while i'll be like i wonder if i put down the right email should i like reach out should so it's so it's funny you said that because it's like that kind of um that feeling so um and then we'll wrap it up i think quick. i lost it for a sec oh okay let me see can you hear me now all right i think we're good yeah we're yeah good. yeah there but i uh, know it was just funny you said that because i could definitely okay. live with all that um like waiting for the email like checking your spam checking everything like sometimes checking instagram to see if yeah. they sign play like what's going on but um yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> We'll wrap it up quickly because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But uh, two more things I wanted to um, just kind of like talk about quick was um, you said you played in uh, Loudon, right, as well? I was I trained with them for about a week, kind of oh. trying to figure things out. Yeah, so I basically like a trial. Okay. Um, yeah. I was of, yeah, that was that was that 2020 winter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Because I was going to see if you cross paths with uh, Colin Miller. Because I kind of played with him. Oh yeah, I know Colin. I yeah. Yeah, you look like Colin too, man. You guys can be brothers. <laughs> I actually saw Colin yesterday. Um, oh, he's in a he's in RGV now, and yep. we played them yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, he's actually man. He's had a nice little. He had a good little stretch. He played I think five or six games in a row and was doing well. Mm -hmm. um, and then Tyler Derrick, who they had signed as their number one, kind of got fit again, and and now it's, it was back to Tyler at least yesterday. Yeah. But yeah, no, Colin's an awesome dude. Yeah, he's, yeah, we get together and train sometimes during the off season and stuff too. He lives probably like forty five minutes or an hour away from me in Maryland. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. I forget he's originally from there because I used to go to Maryland a lot because we'd play at like the Potomac, um, like soccer events and stuff. Like those fields were like the best fields I've ever played on. Like, oh, dude, growing up playing on those sports flex, the sports flex or soccer flex. I don't remember if it's soccer flex or sports flex that they call it now. But yeah, you get spoiled playing on those for sure. Because growing up, I you know I'm playing in rec leagues and like little like MSI Classic was what we had back then before like NCSL and then it moved up. But you're playing on fields where there's no grass, there's there's yeah. rocks, there's there's broken glass and cigarette butts and everything. And then you find out, oh man, we got a game at the sportsplex this weekend. Oh yeah, all right, the place is a, it's just a carpet. Yeah. So yeah, no, they got a nice setup out there for sure. That's awesome. So to wrap it up, I just would, if you were um, able to, you know, kind of give a little advice for, you know, people watching this, younger players, um, if they're looking to either, you know, playing college next level or um, just kind of find that success in any part of their game, um, through everything you've been through, ups, downs, um, what would be some of the advice that you have to pass down for the, you know, the future generation of, of players? Yeah, uh, my biggest thing, and this is a quote I stole from an old, when they were the Washington Redskins, now the Washington football team, mm -hmm. it's a coach called Jim Zorn who was there, and he had his ups and his downs as a coach, but what he always preached was stay medium, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low, um, you know, take the successes as they come, but also take the losses as they come, and, and not try to treat, you know, a, a loss or a mistake or anything like that isn't the end of the world, same as how a win or a, a you know a 90th minute penalty save or whatever you got isn't the the end of the or the end of the world either you know it's not kind of let your emotions swing too far one way or the other and just sort of kind of ride it through 
And then the other, only other thing would really be just, you know, identify what your passions are and go for them hundred percent. You know, um, I, I, some people might say those are kind of two conflicting answers, but I think that they, they really kind of go together. You know, you can, you can have super intense drive and, and still kind of keep that sort of state medium mentality and, you know, just kind of do each day and, and put in a hundred percent and see where it takes you, but not let a bad day affect you too much. Same as you would let a good day affect you too much mm -hmm. uh, and kind of blow your head up. But, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think that's awesome. So um, yeah, like I said, um, I, it was really awesome having you on. It was nice meeting you for the first time. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you kind of coming on. And it, it means a lot to take a little bit of time out of your day. So I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. No, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for reaching out. This was a really good time. Yeah, no, I honestly, I'm not even just saying this. Out, out of everyone I've done, I think this is probably the best one. So it's pretty oh, cool. cool. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited Thank to get you. out there. But, All right, know. appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have a great rest of the well, day. Man, yeah, definitely stay in touch and let me know if there's anything yeah. you know, I can do for you or try to help you out. Um, and let me know how that Flower City thing goes for sure. Absolutely. I'll let you know. All right. All right, All right buddy. Talk to you Bye. later.